Good morning. Looks like we got us a nice day, huh? Are you by any chance the welcoming committee? I ain't no committee. Still, it was nice of you to get up so early and come down here. I always gets up early. Me too. I'm afraid I'll miss something. I guess I ought to introduce myself. I know who you are. Okay. Think it's gonna rain? It don't rain much this time of year. Well, I'm beginning to run out of pleasantries. So if you'll just point me in the direction of town. Good morning. Good morning. I'm the new school teacher. Your hair is pretty long. I'm letting it grow till the war's over. It's liable to reach your ass, son. Let's hope not. Which way is the school, mister? If you're here to teach, I reckon you can read. Welcome overseas. Thank you, ma'am. It's great to be here. Don't speak too quick. You're in a snake pit, son. And them snakes are gonna start snapping at your toes. I'm Mrs. Scott. I'm the principal. Pat Conroy. Do you mind working for a woman? No, ma'am. My father did it before me and his father before him. Do you mind working for a black woman? I'm here. Treat your baby's turn. Treat them tough. Step on him. Step on him every day when they get out of line. Put your foot on them and keep it there. I know colored people better than you do. If you have any trouble, Mama Scott will be right next door. I'll holler. Here are the babies now. Yours is the fifth grade through eighth. Good morning, babies. Good morning. Now, babies, I know you got vocal cords. 
Let me hear you use them. Let me hear you say, good morning, like you mean it. Good morning. Most of you are slow. All of us know that. You don't think good. That's because you're just lazy. 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 And lazy people can't get ahead in life. But you can learn if you work. Work, 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 work. I now have the privilege of introducing Mr. Pat Roy to the class. Mr. Pat Roy is so good to come over here this spring and take the place of our Mrs. Frost, who's gone to have her gallbladder taken out. We are thankful that the Lord brought Mr. Petroy to us. <laughs> That's enough. Now, I don't want to hear no more. I said, quiet. I'm now going to turn you babies over to Mr. Petroy. You're his, and he's yours. I want you all to take a real long look at me. That shouldn't be any hardship, because I'm handsome. <laughs> a thousand years of Irish inbreeding have produced these fine features. This pug nose, this pugnacious jaw. Moreover, I have a penetrating wit fanciful imagination, and my eyes are almost as blue as Paul Newman's. I am your teacher. He crazy. Crazy. As a loon. What are you talking about? What are you saying? Never mind. Haul your chairs up around me, right over here. Just get them up around me. Here, I'll get them. Let's get close. Everybody move now, come on. Get as close as you can. Hey, what are you talking about? That's good. If you want to sit on that table there, young man, go ahead. That's better. Let's start with my name. Various people are screwing it up. It's a swell name, belonged to a bartender, a minister, a classic scholar, and a burlesque queen. It's Conroy. Not Pat Roy, Pat Conroy. Let me hear it. You. Me? Yeah, you. Con... Rack. What? Con... Or act. Close, but not close enough. Conroy. Boy, ploy, toy, joy. You try. Con... Rack. Take a big bite out of it. Try to get your mouth around it. Pretend you got a tennis ball stuck in there. Or, con raw. Come on, everybody try. Or, or. Come on. Or, or. Or, or, or. Or. All right, you try. Con. Ray. You know something? I'm beginning to like the sound of it. What country do we live in, gang? Everybody, tell me at once. Gang? What is the name of this grand old red, white, and blue country of ours? The place where we live, land of the free and the home of the brave. Does anyone know what country we live in? Honey, how much is two and two?
How many fingers have I got raised up here? Eight. You only missed it by two. Try again. Two. I'll tell you what. Start at this first finger and count to the last one. Mr. Scott, I just now completed my first day in your school. The hair on the back of my neck is standing. And Mrs. Scott, seven of my students cannot recite the alphabet. Three children cannot spell their names. Eighteen children do not know we're fighting a war in South Southeast Asia. Eighteen children never heard of Asia. One child thinks the earth is flat, and 17 others agree with it. Two children don't know how old they are. Five children don't know their birth dates. Four children can't count to ten. The four oldest in the class think the Civil War was fought between the Germans and the Japanese. None of them know who Willie Mays or George Washington or Sidney Poitier is. Not one of them's ever been to a movie or stood on top of a hill or ridden on a city bus. Those kids don't know crap. Remember what I told you about colored children. They are slow. They need the whip. They understand the whip. We're off the old plantation, Mrs. Scott. And I'll be goddamned if you're going to turn me into an overseer. How's it going today? Got any big ones? You gotta stick with it. You the new school teacher? Yes, ma'am. I'm the midwife over here. All these children on this island, my children, I take them out of their mothers. I see them when they first be born. I bring them into this earth. Now you got them. Yes, ma'am. Treat them right. They'll do good for you. Yes, ma'am. Treat them right and they'll do good for you. this morning. Mr. Petroy, you have already lost the respect of these children. You have lowered yourself in their eyes. They need discipline, not fun time. This school isn't any fun time, you know. I'm enjoying myself. But you take Dr. Medicine here and you give that boy a dose. A good one, one he'll remember. You got to remember we are overseas, Mr. Petroy, and things are tough overseas.
Okay, gang, everybody sit down. Well, loosen up now. That little horse play was designed to get those old eyelids open, get your blood pressure up, get that gray matter perking. Today, we're gonna have a filibuster. That's something we do very well here in the South. It means a talkathon. I'm gonna talk and you're gonna listen. Anybody has to go pee, do it now, because we're gonna be at it all day. All right. I was born in Beaufort, South Carolina, where I grew up and went to school. I was a bigoted little boy. Bigot, that's somebody with a red neck and a small brain. And I went to an all-white male military college where I wore a uniform even when I went to the latrine. That's the toilet. I ate a lot of grits, smelled a lot of magnolias in my time. I went to the movies twice a week. My favorite actor was Humphrey Bogart. He was my favorite because he never took any shit from anybody. <laughs> I learned about books from the third baseman on my college baseball team who read Milton. And I learned about sex from the girl next door to my house who read Havelock Ellis. I'm gonna be reading both of them to you. I drive a small yellow car called a Volkswagen, manufactured in a country called Germany on a continent called Europe. I write bad poetry, I write great letters to newspaper editors. I'm a hypochondriac, that's somebody who's afraid he's dying every time he sneezes. I believe in love of all kinds. Carnal, platonic, fraternal, maternal, Religious. Goofing off? Just getting my supper. How'd you like to get mine? What you mean? I need somebody to cook for me, do the dishes, wash my clothes. I need a little looking after. How much you gonna pay? How much you want? A dollar. A week? No, man. A day. I guess I can afford that if I cut down on my beer. All right, I'll give you a try. I take home the leftovers? If you're a good cook, there won't be any. energy. I want everybody here slugged. What's all that racket? Reveille, Mr. Scott. Just morning, Reveille. Okay, gang. I'd like to have a word with your babies, Mr. Patroy. Last night, I found a puddle on one of the seats in here. Now, babies, everybody has got to urinate. Isn't that right? And ain't nothing wrong with a man urinating. But you could ruin a seat by urinating on it. All of us know that urine is made out of acid. And acid can eat right through a chair. There's plenty of weak bladders in the world. The bladder is just like a muscle. Some weak, some strong. Now, whoever that person is who wet the chair, and he knows who he is, should stand up now and say, Mrs. Scott, I have a weak bladder, and I am very sorry. Mrs. Scott, I have a weak bladder, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> all right, Al. All, all right. What are you talking about? I was the last person sitting in that chair yesterday. Mr. Pat Roy, I got a right side and I got a wrong side, and you are getting on the wrong one. Okay, gang. Everybody's gonna look good today. Everybody's gonna shine like the sun. Ronnie. In your opinion, who is the greatest man who ever lived? 
Jesus. All right, I'll buy that. Now, somebody else. Who's the second greatest? Jesus Christ. They're one and the same, David, Jesus and Jesus Christ. Anybody want to say a good word for Moses or Buddha? No. No? no? Okay. Let's go on. Who can name me an ocean? I'm going to give you a hint. One of the oceans of the world washes right up against the shores of our own scenic Yamacraw Island. Oh, he mean the beach. What's beyond the beach? What's the name given to that whole ocean out there? It's just the beach, man. Okay, it's the beach. But just for the record, it's also called the Atlantic Ocean. <coughs> Have you ever heard it called that? No, it ain't, Conrad. Well, don't worry about it. That kind of stuff is easy to learn. Just by rapping about it, we learn which ocean is off Yamacraw. <laughs> All right, Viola, what is the name of the ocean? Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic Ocean. What ocean, everybody? Atlantic Ocean. Are you sure it's the Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, we sure. Well, it's not. The real name of the ocean is the Conroy Ocean. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's the truth. My great-great-grandfather was Ferdinand Conroy, a Spanish soldier of fortune who swam from Europe to North America, a distance of 15 million miles. Because of the singular and extraordinary feat, from that day forward, it's been called the Conroy Ocean. No. How do you know? Just think, you said it was Atlantic. I'm a liar. Can't be you the teacher. Teachers lie all the time. Lotus position of yoga. Yoga is a, is a discipline aimed at a state of perfect spiritual insight and tranquility. Lord, hey, Lord. it's said to clear the mind <laughs> and drain, drain the sinus. <laughs> First stated by Isaac Newton and elaborated on by Johannes Kepler. Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton. Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler. Gravity. 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 Isaac Gravity. Isaac Gravity. All right now, everybody brush down from the gum. Down, down from the gum. Now up, up from the bottom. Up from the gum from the bottom. Good. And right, now everybody, spit. <laughs> Try not to spit on your teacher. These are the worst business I ever ate. And I've been in the army. If you don't like them, don't eat them. What's in them? Got my own recipe. So have I. Come on in. cook fancy. You don't read fancy either, do you? All right. This word is cup. Two cups of flour. This word is teaspoon. One teaspoon of baking powder. This word is pound. Quarter pound of shortening. Which word is cup? You're standing between me and my pants, Mr. Scott. Salt water is good for my mosquito bites. Mr. Petroy, we've got young girls on this island. Oh, you can't go scampering around without your pants on. This ain't the Garden of Eden. Sure ain't, Mrs. Scott. I can't allow a white boy and my colored girls to go rubbing elbows too much. You're a young bull, Mr. Petroy, with no cows on this island except colored cows. And I can't afford to have no half-breed cows on this island. Please don't feel any anxiety, ma'am. I was raised in the utmost strictness. Besides, I'm shacked up with a young actress in Buford. 
I'm not an old maid, Mr. Pat Roy. I was married once for 12 years. He was a good little man. A good little man, I have to say so. And after he died, his brother wanted to marry me too. Put baking soda on your bites. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Old time is still a flying. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. Robert Herrick, pretty good country poet, English. Here we got Sultana. Right here. What's this one? Foxfire. Foxfire. How about this here? Baby's breath. Right, baby's breath. This one? Queen Anne's Lace. Queen Anne's Lace. When gardens only had their towers and all the garrisons were flowers, when roses only arms might bear, and men did rosy garlands wear, that means they were all flower children. They had time to write pretty words like that. Who wrote that one down, Conrad? Andrew Marvel. Born 1621, died 1678. What's this one? That's everlasting. Why'd they call it that? Do it last forever? Forever and ever, amen. Everlasting. I'll keep it and see. Get off my land, white folks! Actually, we're mostly black, mister. Did you hear what I said? I said clear off my land now! We're just picking a few wildflowers here. No harm. Oh! <laughs> Who the hell was that? That's Mad Billy. What's he mad about? His wife died on him. Yeah, Sue could take the croup and die. Her ghost come around that cabin every night and spook him. <sighs> Oh, God, I'm so scared. I don't want no ghosts to get me. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Come on. Come on, Ray. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Well, hello there. I just brought you lunch. Forgot it. Stick around. See what's going on. Take a seat there next to your little brother. I ain't sitting next to him. He don't ever take no bath. <laughs> Sit next to me. I do. I got things to do. We're talking about the human body. You got one. Why not hang around and find out how it works? So here we have nature at the top of a form. Efficient, awe-inspiring, the source of a lot of human happiness. This is what the uterus looks like, sort of. It receives and holds a fertilized ovum. I don't believe I'm doing justice to it. It's probably the greatest design since the rotary engine. Oh, why can't I get you in school and keep you there? Why are you the toughest nut I got to crack? Because I hate her, that's why. Mrs. Scott's not your teacher, I am. Well, a teacher ought to act like she likes you, even if she don't. She shouldn't go around knocking you on your head and talking about you in front of folks trying to make you look small. God made all of us. He ain't made a few and somebody else made some. No, he made all of us. All right, get away from that window. So very nice. So very nice. So pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm so pleased to tell you that the children seem to think you are a fine gentleman. A fine gentleman. So very nice. So pleased to make your acquaintance. Same here. The name's Quickfellow. I believe there'll be a storm. Temperature, 93 degrees and slightly falling. Relative humidity, 87% and rising. Scattered thunder showers early this evening. 
Winds out of the east at 15 miles an hour. Small boat warnings out for small boats. Big boats, okay. Don't have to worry about nothing. Take a chair. Hey, where are you going? Wait a minute. I ain't coming in this school. Everybody's got shoes on except me. I think that's trash. You're going around barefooted. All right, everybody. Peel out of their shoes. Let's liberate our bunions. Let's aerate our corns and calluses. Let's wiggle our toes. Mr. Skeffington, come all the way from the mainland to spend some time with us. Mr. Skeffington breathes the pure air of Mount Parnassus. He's our school superintendent. He hires and fires, tells the board of education what's what, and reminds teachers of the nobility of their calling. He's my boss. For God's sake, do good. All right, up here. Rosemary, what is this? I don't know, Conrad. That's a pyramid, Rosemary. They used to bury kings in those things thousands of years ago in a country called Egypt. All right, John, who is this? I don't know, Conrad. You guys are going to put me in the unemployment line. That's Babe Ruth, one of the greatest ball players I ever lived. He used to play for the New York Yankees. He hit 714 home runs in his career, more than anybody in the history of baseball. He play now? No, he's dead now. Yeah, stupid, he dead. That man dead. Johnny, take that man live. <laughs> Get him, Johnny! Get him. and listen to me. There ain't gonna be no more fights in Yamacro Elementary School. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Because I got a method that can render Samson hairless and Goliath helpless. I'm now gonna demonstrate. Oh! Ow! Oh. This is called milking the rat. You press the fingernail of your opponent's finger with your thumb. Your index finger squeezes the back of the top joint of his finger. Your thumb mashes his fingernail, causing considerable consternation and pain. Oh! 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 <laughs> yes, sir. Milking the rat. Guaranteed to break up fights, rebellions, and mutinies in any classroom, anywhere. Go on with your lesson, Pat. We're all listening now. In the light of that demonstration, 
it seems appropriate to talk about Attila the Hunt. Where can we get ourselves a nice, long, cold beer? We can get a short, warm, dusty one at the grocery store. Yeah. Many of these people arrived in Washington last Look, night. There's a bunch of nuns. And that's Dr. Spock. I recognize him. Look at those long-haired freaks. Can't tell if they're boys or girls. Look. Look at that hippie with a flag sewed to his behind. Huntley and Brinkley are lies, too. They ain't supporting our boys in Vietnam. Nah, they're lies. All communists, sure as hell. Look at those long-haired lice. I wouldn't give those lice a drink of piss if they were dying of thirst. God almighty. I think that's my own son. It is. It's right there with the beard. It's Ralphie. I suppose I sounded a little overheated back there. Well, it's just that I love this country. I love the glory of Fort Sumter and Bull Run. I never in my heart, I never in my heart accepted Appomattox. Damn it, Pat! Aren't the important things order and control? Come on, it's beleaguered, Mr. Skeffington. <laughs> I ain't gonna give you the chance. I listened, I, uh, like I was out of my head last time. I heard about my limit. I heard about your wife. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. so I'm more than 20 years old. You drink whiskey? If it's cheap enough. I mix it. I mix it and I sells it. I sells it out of my church brought in these half pint bottles. <laughs> oh, people rather see me coming in the milkman. You want taste? You that new school teacher, ain't you? That's right. I know your business. You teach me to read and write. I'll trade that whiskey for it. I mix it with that copper tubing. That way your ass don't get blinded drinking this stuff. Moses coming down from Sinai. 
It's holy writ, and nobody does any talking but the quarterback. Okay. Break! Hop! Break! Hop! 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 You come at me. Do as good as you can. All right, you'd imagine no lie. You're the Great Wall of China. Come on, Ellen! Get out of here! You're a brick shit out. Even if you crotch itches, you don't scratch. Nobody moves till the ball is snapped. Sit down. I helped myself to some of your buttermilk. This is the end of it. Make yourself at home, sir. This visit ain't social. It's a pain in the ass. Took me off the golf course. Oh, what do you go around then? Under 80. Never mind about that. I'm up at five. I'm shaved at six. I'm at my desk at seven with all my pencils sharpened. Why aren't you? Who says I'm not? I've been informed. Who informed you? Uh, just say I've been informed and leave it at that. No, just tell me who informed you and leave it at that. <laughs> Are you late for class or aren't you? I was once. My toilet overflowed and I spent the morning using the plunger on it. Does it work now? No, it doesn't. Use some plumber's friend on it. Open it right up. Thanks anyway, but I've dug a slit trench. Oh. Heard you stuck a feather in your hair and war hooped around your class. Heard you come in there barefoot. Heard you drew private parts on the blackboard. You call that teaching? Yes, sir. Well, I don't. I call it farting around. Something's happening on this island, Mr. Skeffington. And compared to that, you're nothing and neither am I. I don't want to have to come over here again, Pat. I get seasick making that crossing. A little red hen once found a grain of wheat. Who will plant this wheat, she asked. I won't, said the dog. I won't, said the cat. I won't, said the pig. Good. That rate? You'll be reading Playboy by next week. Well, I sure hope it got more to it than this. It has. What you doing here, Conrad? Fishing. <laughs> Not enough. Well, I mean, what you doing here on this island? You're the only white man here. I mean, except for riding, he's only here because of this store here. Well, I'll tell you. I used to chuck watermelons black kids, call them niggerheads. Then I did a 180 degree turn, and if a black man handed me a bucket of cow piss, told me to drink it. 
To rid my soul of the stench of racism, I'd only ask them for a straw. <laughs> <laughs> now, just teaching school. <laughs> Mercy. You ever been off this island? Nope. You ever want to get off it? Mm -mm. You don't want to see the rest of the world? <laughs> the porno pics, used car lots, Colonel Sanders, Kentucky Fried? <laughs> no. I can get my shoelaces here. Tobacco and combs. <laughs> Liniment and cheap candy. And now I can read. Hmm. Looks like you got something, huh? I can pull somebody, somebody from that river. They fall in that river, they go down like a stone. Well, I can't swim neither. Ain't nobody around here can. Kick your feet. You're gonna pound your hands. You're gonna suck in there and you're gonna swim. No! Okay. No, no. Hold your breath now. All right. Come in. Come on. Come toward me. Kick your feet. Kick your feet. Now snap your hands. Come on. You wanna suck me? Come get me. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't that fun? You dirty son of a bitch! No profanity. Just proficiency. All right. Keep trying. Let's go. Come on, everybody in. You can stay in there. OK, come on. Come on in the water. Ronnie, come here. Stay in that water. Mary, stay in that water. Come here. Like some rosy fair <laughs> The prettiest face And the neatest hand I love the ground Whereon she stands I love the ground Whereon she stands <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, man, you sing like a frog <laughs> Oh, that boy's a car ain't seen like a frog <laughs> man, I sang good. What are you talking about? You say so bad, Conrad, man, you hurt my ear. <laughs> Everybody warm now? Yeah, we're warm. Yeah, we're warm. Gang, 
If you think you're rid of me for the summer, you're not. Summer school starts Monday morning. How many are you gonna show up? Only three, huh? Okay. I believe in democracy. We're gonna vote again. However, any arm I don't see raised in the air this time is gonna get broken. Now, how many of you come to summer school? Excellent. That is unanimous. And I must say, it's extremely gratifying for me to find that my students share my enthusiasm for learning. This hunk of orange on the map is the country of Brazil. Now, what bright young scholar can tell me what product we drink from Brazil? Some people drink it black. Some people drink with cream. Some people drink with sugar. And some people don't drink it at all. Go! Scott, eat popcorn. What's happening in here? Well, Mr. George Sanders is just about to be run through the gut by Mr. Tyrone Power. Where'd you find all this equipment? In the back of a closet getting dusty. I don't hold with machine education, Mr. Petroy. You're wasting valuable time. Your job is to see that these children learn their lessons and do their duty. The smell in here would have drive a preacher out of church. Smelling bad in school will not be tolerated. I am tired of people stinking in this school. Mr. Scott, your tact is only exceeded by your delicacy. We thank you for making us all aware of our armpits. And now, if you don't mind, we'd like to see how the movie ends. Just remember that I'm the principal here, Mr. Pat Roy. I am the principal. Don't listen. She ain't talking about you. Good point. But I don't like to see you get your feelings hurt. Believe me, it pisses me off. Bitch woman. Yeah, bitch woman. I bet you call me bitch man behind my back. No, Conrad. at your head. It's me, Conroy, God damn it. I keep flying handy all the time, Mr. Petroy. Never know who's gonna come up to your house at night. And if you're smart, you get some fire too. I'd rather have a cup of coffee, Mr. Scott. Make these with molasses? Yes. And a pinch of cinnamon and a pinch of nutmeg. I use a little ginger myself. I don't like ginger. That was a lousy thing you did this afternoon. I'm making them tough, Mr. Petroy, because it is tough. You're tromping on them. What do you know about it? They are going out into a world where they gotta go by the man. They gotta please the man and see him smile. That's a crock of shit, Mrs. Scott. You're young, and you're cocky, and you got that thin, white skin. Well, that's just fine for you. I don't have your advantages. I've always known I was colored. When I was a Negro, I knew I was colored. And now that I'm black, 
I know which color that is. So I just try to please the man and everything rolls along just fine. of the bumblebee by Rimsky Korsakoff. Do you hear them bees in it? Just like a honey tree. Any honey trees on Yamacron? Yeah, they're honey trees. Honey bees, too. Bees sting. Bees sting bad. Who wrote this song about a lot of bees? Rinky Korsakoff. Yeah, that's old Rinky, all right. Gang, we're going to learn all his records. We're going to look like geniuses when we know all his songs. Visitors are going to come here expecting nothing but stupidity and poverty. I'm going to switch on this record player. You're going to look those people right in the eye and exclaim, are you perchance familiar with the works of Rimsky Korsakoff? <laughs> we'll knock their behinds off. Now, here we got something very sweet. Brahms Lullaby. You don't need any second all, any phenobob, or any Milltown. You just drop this on, and the Sandman got you. Go to sleep. Remember this sleepy time, Cat? He Brahms. Yeah, he Brahms. Good. We'll get back to him later. Here we got the big daddy of them all. On the top ten till the end of time. He's a long hat cat named Beethoven. Let me hear his name. Beethoven. Cloven? Yeah, Cloven. That's close enough. Now, one of Beethoven's most famous songs was the Fifth Symphony. It was written about death. Death knocking at the door. Death, that grim, grim reaper, coming to the house and rapping at the door. Does death come to everybody's door sometime? Yeah, death come knocking at Mad Billy's door last winter. Well, Beethoven thought a little bit about death and then decided that if death were really knocking at the door, he sounds something like this. Ta 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 Now, I'm going to put the needle on this record. And we're all going to hear death 
knocking at Bay Cloven's door. <laughs> death? Do you hear old bloodsucker death, that son of a bitch? Yeah, I hear him. Me too. That old Bay Cloven Bill. Bay Cloven will be proud of you. Willie Mays will be proud of you. And from now on, we're going to be proud of ourselves. We're going up the hill, gang. A foot may slip here or there, but nobody's going to fall. Needlepoint. A sewing. That's right. Women sew. Well, there's a whole new thing going on. Men do things women do, and women do things men do. I'm making a pillow. You know that Mr. Quick fella? Yeah, I know him. What about him? Well, he said I wake up the devil in him, and that there ain't but one way to lay that down again, and that's for me to go up there to his house and live with him. Does he know you're 13 years old? Yeah, he know. Is he gonna get my daddy a new plow? Fix up my brother's teeth? What's he gonna do for you? He gonna get me a new red dress. He'd be getting you pretty cheap. Well, you know business of yours know how. All right, go ahead. Throw your books in the river. Go back to counting on your fingers. Have 14 kids in a row, look 60 when you're 30. Let your brain rot in your skull. Why do you always pick on me? Because the gospel according to Conrad is I will. Higher, stronger, faster, better. Not a floor scrubber, but Wanda Landowska. Not a diaper changer, but Marion Anderson. Not a pig slopper, but Mary McLeod Bethune. Not a fry cook, but Eleanor Roosevelt. Out Kaiser, out Nullis, that's Latin. Either a Caesar or nobody. Tried up raisin. How do you find that little pinky when you go looking for it? All right, you little skunks, knock it off. Everybody shut up. On the outside of every men's room in the world is the word gentleman. I'll tell you what that means. A gentleman treats his fellow man with respect for his person and for his dignity. He doesn't slander his religion, his color, or his pecker. And if he does any of these things around me, I'm gonna lay this fist alongside his jaw. Now get out of here. Button on MacArthur. And listen to me. I've been in a lot of locker rooms. And I can tell you that for your age and size, what you got there is a baseball bat. Come 
from Africa? Africa! I came from Africa! No! Yeah, I came up from Africa because I'm white with blue eyes. Ireland is a country in Africa. No! James Brown came from Ireland. No! What's the largest planet in the universe? No! Second largest? No! Nearest star? No! The largest country in the world? No! Country with the most people? No! James Brown came from China. No! Who's the first president? No! The second president was Pat Conroy. Yeah! Who crazy? You crazy! What country do we live in, gang? The United States of America! What state do we live in? America! You sure? Yeah! Are you sure? Where we fighting the war? Yeah! Who's the president of North Vietnam? Ho Chi Minh! Who? Ho Chi Minh! What's James Brown's greatest song? Say it loud, I'm proud! No, it's not. His greatest song is Say It Loud, I'm White and I'm Proud! Yeah! See? He's, he's tucking away for winter. Hey, gang! You see this fellow over here? We got a visitor. What? Yeah. We got an armadillo. Genuine armadillo. This is a good time of year. Things slow down. The shadow begins to stretch longer and longer. Trees lose their leaves. You begin to see the skeleton of nature. That reminds me. Hey, gang. What are we doing on October 31st? Nothing. October 31st. Come on, man. No. Something's going on October 31st. What's that? A holiday. A holiday? A holiday. That way you go from door to door with bags in your grubby little hands. What you talking about, Conrad? Yeah. 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 What, what you talking about? about? Haven't you guys ever heard of Halloween? Halloween. <laughs> no, we ain't heard. You mean to tell me that you never dressed up like Frankenstein and went out trick-or-treating? Man, no. crazy. Trick or treating. Frankenstein. You have never gone out and rung bells and been handed candy corn and all day suckers, peanut butter cups, and bubble gum and fig news? Bubble gum. No, we no. ain't. Even no. no! That. That is ridiculous. That is completely ridiculous. That is un American and completely ridiculous. Halloween is one of the truly great parts of being a kid. I never heard of it. We're going to Buford. Buford? Buford! Oh, taking a bunch of Buford! Buford! Yeah. 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 yeah! We're gonna go there. Yeah. Yeah. Ring. Hey, you we're gonna ring every bell in town, and we're gonna rot our teeth and stop our guts, and we're gonna participate in this great celebration. Or oh, my name isn't Patroy Conrack Conroy, which it isn't. How are we going? Yeah, how are we going? Yeah. We are going yeah. in a balloon. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going in my private submarine. Oh, What's a submarine? Submarine is a boat that goes under the water, just like you see Viola's hair. That little periscope she got sticking up there. And we're gonna go under the, under the water, take a deep breath, and we're on to Buford. <gasps> Conroy. Hello, Miss Spaulding. Haven't seen you in some time, Pat. I've been away, teaching. That's splendid. I'm bringing my kids to Buford for Halloween. I gotta sleep in some place. Could you and Mrs. Spaulding find room for two of them just for one night? It's a big house. I should think so. They're black. You say these little children are black? As the ace of spades, Mrs. Webster. I suppose it would be the right thing to do. And do it. I couldn't do it on my own. I'd have to consult my husband. Well, I'll call back. They can sleep in Freddy's room. He's gone off on a commune in Oregon somewhere. Thank you, Mrs. Seller. Uh, they don't wet their beds, do they? Not 
To my knowledge, ma'am. That's good. <laughs> yeah. What do you want, Pat? How'd you know it was me? You're the only one I know who can get up to such foolishness. It's for Halloween. I'm bringing my kids over here. A trip like that isn't worth a pound of cow dung. Those kids don't need trips. They need fundamentals. They need drill and more drill. That's what you think they need. It's not what I think they need. Now listen here. Last Christmas, I sent two big turkeys out of my freezer over to those children on Yamacro. And I'm willing to send 10 pounds of penny candy for Halloween. But I don't want them shoving and pushing and running wild in Buford. Is that clear to you? Mr. Skeffington. Those kids are my responsibility, and it's up to me to decide how best to educate them. Now, look, boy. This is my bailiwick. This is my cotton patch, and you're my hired hand. You stay on the other side of that river, or by God, you're going to see a side of me you've never seen before. Boss, those kids are going to spend Halloween the way the rest of the kids in America spend it. And if you want to raise hell about it, then raise it. Thank you, Frida. What's happening with you guys? Can't go. What are you talking about? Ain't going. What do you mean, ain't going? We're all going. It's all planned. Not going nowhere. Be right here. What happened? My grandmother just laughed when I said we're going. My mama just say no. They ain't gonna let you go trick-or-treating? That's just crap. My mama tell me not to bother her. Listen, go home tonight, sit down in the middle of the kitchen, beat your fists on the floor, kick your feet, hold your breath till your eyes pop out, refuse all food and drink. My mama kill me if I do something like that. You go tell them, Connor, right? Yeah. Yeah, you go tell them. We're going. Don't worry. from Edna. I want to talk to you about your grandchildren who are in my class at school. God. God almighty. You, Mr. Conrad. Yes, ma'am. Oh, God, Mr. Conrad. My grands love Mr. Conrad. So that's who you are, the white school teacher. Yes, ma'am, that's who I am. People say you are a wonderful teacher. Thank you very much, Mrs. Graves. God, you are a good-looking teacher. I'm delighted you think so. Yes, you're a fine-looking teacher. <laughs> you're a fine-looking man. You well, got a nice face for a white teacher. Actually, some people think I got a nose like a pig. 
Oh, no, you got a beautiful nose. Pig nose looks so bad. If I, I'm so all fired good looking, are you, gonna, are you gonna let me take your grandchildren to Beaufort for Halloween? No, I ain't. You're the queen bee around here, Mrs. Graves. If you say yes, they all say yes. I say no. Mrs. Graves, Beaufort's got a public library, county courthouse, moving picture show and a park. I'm afraid of the river. I lose three family in the river, and I ain't gonna lose no grands to that river. Nothing will happen to them. I'll watch them night and day. May God take my left testicle if I don't bring them back safe and sound. God, you are a good-looking white man. Are you starting that again? Yes, you sure good-looking. Well, Edna, I'm sure glad you like my looks, because I sure do <coughs> like yours. Well, how about it? Look out! Pick up them dogs again! What's them old lines for? What old lines? Those old lines all over the road. Oh, you mean them lines that divide the highway? They tell the driver which side of the road he can stay on. Lines with spaces between them tell the driver he can pass another car. Somebody had to walk a long way to paint them all. This show is a fine town. It's the best town I've ever seen. This the only town you ever see, you big fool. You call me a fool, I bust your head. All right, ready, set, go! You can do that again, son. Yeah. Who can tell me what that means? Come on. We does what you tells us, Conrack, and when we's old, we still does it. Carlos, either you're one of the great ass kisses of the world, or you finally learn to read. Who has to use the bathroom? OK, this is as good a place as any. Boys to the right, girls to the left. There you go. Everybody wash your hands! Nice to everybody. Be polite. Say thank you. But if they turn your way empty-handed, we're gonna soap the windows and dump the garbage. <laughs> okay, gang. Good luck. Say thank you to Mrs. Sellers on your way out.
Thank you, Mrs. Evans. Scared out of my wits, I charmed out of my shoes. I guess I just have to pass out chocolate kisses and sugar cookies. <laughs> Good evening, Pat. Evening, Mrs. Skevington. Don't let him eat too much. He'll get a tummy ache. Choo! <laughs> All right. On a good ship, Molly Pop, it's a sweet trip to the candy shop where the bonbons play on the sunny beach of Peppermint Bay. Lemonade stand. Everywhere, Cracker Jack bands fill the air, and there you are, happy landing on a chocolate bar. On the good ship, Molly Pop, it's a sweet trip to a candy shop. I'm fired. That's a shame. Buddy, you don't get a tip for this one. to do. What's that? We listening. We gonna strike the school. Yeah. Ain't no children gonna go to that schoolhouse door. Right. That old schoolhouse is gonna look mighty empty with no children in it. Yeah. Anybody, anybody send their children to school, they get beat up. Yeah. We beat up anyone who breaks the strike. Yeah. We beat them. We beat them with sticks. I got a big stick, too. Don't you worry. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate the support, but if you strike the school, you're going to have the sheriff coming over here and threatening to put you in jail. I tell that sheriff to get his ass out of my yard. Yeah. I tell him he can put Edna under the jail for 99 years. Yeah. Her children don't go to no schoolhouse till Conrack in it. Now, I'm not scolding, Mr. Pat Roy, but you did go swimming naked where everybody could see you. You did cuss in front of your babies. You bought moonshine whiskeys, and you tacked up a picture of a woman's bare vagina in your classroom. That was a Picasso, Mrs. Scott. It was a woman's bare vagina. You'll get on someplace else. I don't want to be anyplace else. Then why don't you fight them, Mr. Petroy? I would. I thought you'd be glad to see me go, Mrs. Scott. Oh, it's all right. We had our ups and downs. But I know you love the babies. Ah, this little fella could eat four heads of lettuce if I'd let him. Mr. Skeffington, I want my job back. I know you do, son. You can ball me out. You can put on my record that I'm an incorrigible son of a bitch. 
and cut off my teacher's pension, but I want my job back. Don't shout around these little bunnies. It scares them. I got some testimonials here. I'd like to read them to you. Let me see them. Spelling's terrible. But the sentiments, Mrs. Skeffington, the sentiments. Oh, they like you. I like you, too. Never said I did. Look, Mr. Skeffington, one of these days you're going to sink into old age. Well, I'll be a comfort to that old age. I'll get married, bring a baby by to dandle on your knee and spit on your vest. Come by every Sunday for dinner, help you weed the lawn. When you take to a wheelchair, I'll tuck a blanket around your knees, push you down the road. Cry like hell at your funeral. Just give me back my job. Nope. I'm going to replace you just as easy as I would a light bulb. With what? Well, it won't be with no outside agitator or no communist trained in Havana. What are you talking about? I've never even been to Miami. You think rules and regulations are all bull crap, so you just go your own way. But if you're going to survive in this world, young man, you're going to have to accept bull crap. Well, sir, as long as you're prepared to accept crap, I think I ought to tell you that that rabbit has just done it in your lap. I didn't have this young man's privileges. I came up the hard way. I worked in the mill. One night, I stepped outside. I fell to my knees, and I prayed to Jesus and asked him what he wanted me to do with my life. And he said, teach. And so I did for 40 years. Now, along comes this youngster. He doesn't work with the chain of command. Uh, he doesn't communicate. He wants to denounce the old values. He wants to erode the old values. He wants to change everything with a quick chop to the gonads. I'm not going to let him. You have no less a punishment than a dismissal? You mean... If he's late to school a couple of times, you have no punishment, like docking his pay or reducing his leave time? Our teachers all obey the rules, sir. We never have to discipline him. Well, son, I'm sorry. The superintendent has the right to fire any teacher that he considers undesirable. And that's the law. It's very simple. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to take you away from your daily routine. I know you got stores to open, clothes to wash, marketing to do, and other chores. But I've just lost my job, and I want to talk. My name's Pat Conroy. I was paid $510 a month to teach a bunch of kids on a little island off this coast how to read and write. I also try to teach them to embrace life openly to reflect upon its mysteries and to reject its cruelties. The school board of this fair city thinks that if they root out troublemakers like me, the system will hold up and perpetuate itself. They think as long as blacks and whites are kept apart, with the whites getting scholarships and the blacks getting jobs, picking cotton and tomatoes, 
with the whites going to college and the blacks eating moon pies and drinking Coca-Cola, that they can weather any storm and survive any threat. Well, they're wrong. Their day is ending. They're the captains of a doomed army retreating in the snow. They're old men, and they can't accept a new sun rising out of strange waters. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is very different now. It's true this town still has its diehards and nigger haters, but they grow older and crankier with each passing day. When Buford digs another 400 holes in her plentiful graveyards, deposits there the rouged and elderly corpses and covers them with a sandy low country soil, then the old South will be silenced and not heard from again. As for my kids, I don't think I changed the quality of their lives significantly or altered the fact that they have no share in the country that claimed them, the country that's failed them. All I know is I felt much beauty in my time with them. Say. So you gonna go after Pernell Jackson instead? What about your daddy's plow? He can use the old one. What about your red dress? I don't need it. When the time is right, you take up with a man. It should be somebody who appreciates the honor you confer. I see everybody got up before breakfast. Come to say goodbye, Conrad. Well, my boat will be ready any minute. baseball player of all time? Jackie Robinson. What's the largest desert in the world? Sahara. Closest planet to the sun? Mercury. That's right, Anthony. You got it today, kiddo. What's the capital of our nation, the good old United States? Washington, D.C. Do you remember a poem by the man who robbed people? The highwayman. And what happened to the highwayman? Shot him down. Right, shot him down like a dog in the highway. Another poem by the man. Listen, my children, and you shall hear. Paul Revere. What did old Paul do? He rode around saying the British are coming, the British are coming. So what the British were coming? What were the people supposed to do? Getting ready for the British. Right, getting ready for the British. But who was getting ready for the British? Minutemen. And why were they called Minutemen? They was ready in a minute. OK, and what state is Yamacraw Island located? South Carolina. Gang, what is the state capital of South Carolina? Columbia! It hurts very badly to leave you. My prayer for you is that the river is good to you in the crossing.